Hi. Today I want to talk about Dynaxity. And Dynaxity is a combination of dynamics and complexity. So things are speeding up and things get more complicated. And the combination of both is quite tricky. So Dynaxity, I, just to make you familiar with the concept, my slide deck is designed for 60 minutes. And these guys from TED gave me only 18 minutes. So I will speak uh, with a double speed, and I will skip every second slide, and that's Dynaxity. <laughs> the left car is my first car, it's a Golf 2. And when there was a part inside that car, it was used only in that one car. And today, if we take a, a Golf 7, I think it is, one part can be used in about seven, uh, 50 different types of cars. So the simplicity on the one side, that you have only one part, creates a dynamicity on the other part. That means that processes and design and decision making is much more complex. So efficiency is a driver for dynamicity. And if you take that Golf and you add some worldwide web functionality, then it's called connected car, then everything changes because you're not offering anymore a product that you just give to the customer, but you have to operate a service. And you're not in the, on the head of supply chain like a hierarchy, like a pyramid, but you're in the middle of a network of Apple and Google and other and, and small companies. And we, if you talk about quality, it's not about measuring things like PPM parts per million. You can measure it, you can see it. It's about something like customer experience. So innovation creates dynamicity. And this is a picture of a district of the capital of South Korea. It's called Gangnam. And there was that song that spoke about the people that live at Gangnam, Gangnam Style. And it was six months from the start of Gangnam Style, of that video, to reach one billion. And this number has to do with the second number. It's 510. It's the average number of friends or links of young people on Facebook. But that's only one part of the story. The second part is that companies, real companies like British Airways, changed their planning of, of flights to Seoul because so many people wanted to visit so uh, Seoul and South Korea. So a hype could affect also the real industry. And if we step back a little bit, we see that the industry is really undergoing a, a change. We come from decades where the production and development and information was centralized, and only big entities could do something. And now we see that everything is distributed and it's available for all of us. So if I want to, to sell some, something, I can do it. If I want to produce something, it's no problem for me. But this speeds up and makes it much more complex and creates an exit here again. And there are people which see that we are coming from a planned capitalism now to a distributed capitalism. So if we want to make something together, we have to organize, we have to find a way how to do things. And you know, there are things we can organize here on the soccer field, or we can organize it like that. And the funny thing is that you all can read this org chart immediately. So you know who's the most important person. Yeah? And you know that that guy from department three is more important than the guy from department one. Isn't it? Yeah. And you also know that department two, that guy has a problem. Yeah. <laughs> so we are used to that sort of, of org chart. We know that. And the underlying concepts are these. The first concept is, it's me and there's a box around me. And it describes that box, what I have to do, what I'm allowed to do, and why they kick my ass for. Yeah. But the more important concept is this one. The box defines what's not me, yeah? what, I, what I leave, what I'm not going, going to do in future. So the box defines what's outside my responsibility. And there's a concept, number three, that defines what's on the top and what's the bottom line. So it's about social status. It's about chain of command. And the fourth concept is, if I want to make a career, if I'm successful, I can climb up and up, but I never can downgrade. There's no way to downgrade. So if I reach a position where I want to step back, it's not allowed here to downgrade because it's about social status, it's about money, it's about responsibilities. That's not possible. So this kind of organization is, let's say, stable. Yeah? And if we have a look on that kind of organization, 
in the real world, we see that this kind of organization is very well done for static or dynamic regions where things move slowly. It's a world of business cases. In a business case, you think you can anticipate things. You think that you can plan and then control and check. You think that you can have a tailorism, that you can have a stable job split, that you can have stable interfaces. So now what happens if we go to the regime of turbulent or even chaotic systems? So we have multiple futures. It could be like this, it could be like that, and we don't know which one of the futures it will be. We have moving targets. We don't have predictability. So what happens if a today's system of organizing things comes together with turbulent or chaotic systems? So that's what's happening. We call it matrix organization. It's very simple, you all know it, because you have a competence line and you have a project view. Uh, that's not true because you also need a functional view, of course. You need a platform view. Um, you should organize corresponding to the regions and to the customers, I think. And then there are these two guys who went to the same university. <laughs> so that's real organization. Yeah? It's much more complex. Let's have a look on real processes. So we we're a consulting company, so it's, it's beautiful. We have programs for one year, and we design, we make interviews, we make workshops, etc. Then we write down all the processes. But the system is much more smarter than we are. When we have documented in IT systems, they start to bypass the processes. Yeah? When we are ready, the world has changed. So there is no such thing as stable processes. We are just redeveloping processes again and again. So um, we've had to... We have to find a solution how to, to adapt our way of organizing things with the real world. And the problem is that we all start in doing more of the same. So if we are successful here on the left side, of course we know that it was a tremendously good system to have this sort of organization and of, of org charts and processes in the, in the past. But now we have to find a way to break the pattern. So don't touch a winning system. Is very true sentence, but break the patterns, we have to find out where to step into a completely new system. The good news is there's only one fundamental pattern we have to break, and this is about the boxes. In the past, we defined the way we organize ourselves by defining what's inside that boxes. It's about possession, yeah? what is mine, what is yours, and what's the separation between us. And the pattern we have to break is that in future, we have to look on the relationships. So it's not about what's inside a box, but it's about how these boxes communicate, correspond, how they exchange ideas, how they find decisions. And if we take only the relationships between entities, between people, between teams, that is called a network. So if this is a new org chart, it defines how people, how entities are interrelated, how they exchange. And the properties of such a network are quite cool because instead of stability, you get flexibility. Instead of resource planning, you get breathing organizations. Instead of transparency that a person knows and sees everything, you just get local fit. Instead of standardization, it's about knowledge transfer. And we don't know strategy. We just want the, the, the organization itself is intelligent. So what do we have to do if we want to manage a network? First, we have to manage communication, most important. Shared governance, how to bring decisions to life. We have to define the values in the identity of the network, why we are here, why we are part of the same network. We have to deal with real persons, not with functions, not with roles. And we have to trust. That's the currency of every network. Networks are only working when there's trust. And it's also something about love, yeah? You know, it's about compassion. It's about something more than just on the formal side. So you have to decide where to put the intelligence in, in the system or the people. And if you put the intelligence in the people, you can rethink a lot of the old rules. For example, why does a person just have to have one boss? Why can't he have two bosses, one for money, one for something else? Or why can't he choose 
which boss is uh, the right one. Why shouldn't a person be in two teams at the same time? Why isn't it possible? Could, could be absolutely necessary because of the job. Why do we have only one org chart? Why don't we have an org chart for information and another for decision making and then a third one for something else? Why is it always a pyramid? Because in such a pyramid, the intelligence of the organization is limited. It's limited, it's the intelligence of the CEO, which is limited. Why don't we have only, uh, why do we have only these cascades of information? Well, you all know that the information exchange is much more efficient if you drink a coffee with someone. Yeah? And why are standards so important? Is it really important that every piece of the organization does the same thing? And we can also rethink leadership. Is leadership something like command and control, or is it enabling and, and trust and, and guaranteeing that? And if we have a look on all these XXX management things, like change management, I think important is not to manage the change, but to create the ability, to ensure the ability of an organization to be capable when change happens, to do the right thing, to find the right answers. So it's about enabling, it's about a capability. So it seems that the networks could be an answer what is the right organization form if you go to the turbulent or chaotic systems. And the things we talk about then are things like organizing it in a fractal way so we can scale, in finding decisions in a distributed way, not in a centralistic way, where we have to aggregate all the information and then have limited knowledge about things we decide. It's about using the intelligence of the complete network, not only by a few people. It's about having more agile processes, how to develop, how to find out where we want to go. And also to allow, to have the courage that the culture in a network can be different somewhere else. It hasn't to be the same culture everywhere. But there's bad news also. You lose control. So control is gone. You lose transparency, you lose planning, all that stuff that gives you security today. You lose it. But there's also good news. Uh, when Dynexity enters your life, it's like having birthday daily on a daily basis. So you get surprised every single day. Thank you very much. Thank you.